Let's now look at the third law of thermodynamics. It states that the entropies of all perfectly crystalline substances are the same at t is equal to zero Kelvin. The convention is to set the entropy at zero Kelvin to be equal to zero, meaning that there is only one arrangement in a perfectly crystalline substance. This is expressed using the definition of entropy where the natural logarithm of one is zero, so the entropy at t is equal to zero Kelvin is also zero. Thus to find the absolute entropy of a substance being S, well that's equal to the entropy at temperature T minus the entropy at zero degrees Kelvin, and that's equal to the integral between zero and T of the heat capacity divided by the temperature times small changes in temperature DT. The figure on the right illustrates the result of this integral as the change in entropy as a function of temperature is continuous up until phase transitions. At these points, there's a change in entropy that's discontinuous due to the phase change. The third law gives us a reference point to calculate absolute entropies. However, not every substance is perfectly crystalline at zero degrees Kelvin. For example, vibrational modes are still present. Additionally, there can be different orientations of molecules. For example, carbon monoxide, which is pictured on the slide, may arrange in either direction semi-randomly. The image on the left shows a perfect arrangement where all the CO molecules are arranged in the same direction, while the image on the right has an imperfect arrangement where one of the CO molecules is aligned opposite to all the others. This is just one example of where a perfectly crystalline structure may not exist. The residual entropy is the actual entropy of a substance at zero degrees Kelvin. So let's now put these two ideas together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the absolute entropy of carbon monoxide at 16 degrees Kelvin. And to do that, we're gonna estimate the residual entropy of this one mole of carbon dioxide that we're gonna calculate. And from that then, we're then gonna be able to calculate the absolute entropy. So first we're gonna do the residual entropy. And with that, we're gonna start with just the standard entropy expression, that Boltzmann's constant times the natural logarithm of the number of microstates. We know that CO has two configurations in its crystalline form at zero degrees Kelvin. And so if we look at this for one CO molecule, then its entropy is equal to Kb times the natural logarithm of two. And if we extrapolate this to one mole of CO molecules, well then that entropy is just gonna be equal to Kb times the natural logarithm of two raised to the power of Na, or Boltzmann, or sorry, Avogadro's number. And so using then the properties of being able to then pull down exponents in front of terms, then we would say its entropy is equal to Avogadro's number times Boltzmann's constant times the natural logarithm of two. And then if we remember from before, Avogadro's number times Boltzmann's constant is equal to the gas constant. So then I can just write R natural logarithm of two. And if I start substituting in numbers, I have 8.3145 times the natural logarithm of two and so that means then my entropy, or my residual entropy for carbon monoxide, or one mole of it, is 5.76 joules per mole Kelvin. So this is now the residual entropy at zero Kelvin. And so in order to then find out the entropy at 16 Kelvin, we have to now do that integral, where we're basically adding up all the entropy that's gained by the increase in temperature. And so to do that, we're just gonna say, well, the entropy is equal to the integral between zero and 16 Kelvin, and that's of the heat capacity, where I'm jumping ahead of myself here, the heat capacity divided by the temperature times dt. In this case, the heat capacity is equal to N times the molar heat capacity at constant pressure is what we're using. In this case, my N is equal to one, since I have one mole, so it's really gonna be CPM as inside that integral between zero and 16 divided by temperature times dt. And so in this case, since we can see in our hint here that this heat capacity term is a function of temperature, I can't pull it outside of the integral sign. I actually have to substitute it in. So that means then this integral becomes integral of zero to 16 of 9.5 times 10 to the minus four t cubed divided by t times dt. And so in this case, I can cross off terms, and so what I'm really left with is a t squared term. And so what this becomes now is then the integral of t squared. And so I can move out this constant out front, and so I have the integral of t squared times dt. 
And so the integral of the antiderivative of t squared, well, that's simply going to be equal to, with this constant out front, 9.5 times 10 to the minus 4, I have t cubed over 3. And that's going to be a value between 0 and 16. So if I do this fundamental theorem of calculus expression, what I'm going to have is 16 cubed divided by 3 minus 0 cubed divided by 3. And so what that leaves me with in the end is uh, entropy from this integral, 1.3 joules per mole Kelvin. Let's now put this together. So we have basically, in this case, we have our residual entropy. And then we have this integral so that this raises it to 16 Kelvin from 0 degrees Kelvin and sort of the entropy that comes from those two parts. And if you remember from the slide where we were talking about absolute entropies, we had the entropy, in this case, we're going to say at entropy at 16 degrees Kelvin minus the entropy at 0 Kelvin or entropy naught. And that was equal to this integral of C dt divided by t. That was, this was an expression that was written inside the slide. And so what we found here is We've determined this integral, and that's the number that we can then sub into there. We have our residual entropy, which is the entropy at 0 Kelvin, which is the number that we're going to be substituting into there. So therefore, to find the entropy at 16 degrees Kelvin, what we're doing is we're adding up that residual entropy with the entropy that we found from doing the integral, meaning the, ener the entropy that's now added to the system because we changed the temperature. And so what that means is then the entropy at 16 degrees Kelvin is simply going to be 5.76 plus 1.3. And so in the end, then I get an entropy value of 7.06 joules per Kelvin mole, which again is a combination of the fact that we have a residual entropy in the system because the carbon monoxide can be in one of two states, and we have a mole of that. And then also we have ourselves the entropy gain from the temperature change. And again, Making a comparison with that slide where we had how the entropy increases with temperature, well, in that slide, that line started at zero, and that assumed that we had a perfectly crystalline system where the entropy at zero Kelvin is equal to zero. But in our case, in this system, that entropy now starts at 5.76 joules per mole. So it just essentially means that our entropy is in zero at zero Kelvin. It is in a perfectly crystalline um, system. And so then we're basically then just finding out that number as we extrapolate upwards using how entropy changes with temperature. And that's where basically we get to this 7.06, starting from the residual entropy of 5.76.